caring about the Vienna Werkstatt and how it originated because it was all about the making, it was all about the workshops, it was all about the craft, it was hugely inspirational because um, it completely transformed and gave me a different perspective. The sewing table. I'm particularly fascinated uh, with this object and the fact that you know this activity seems to not be relevant almost to, uh, to today. And, and what's interesting is um, the combination of all this kind of hard elements or hard materials together with the softness of what it holds on the inside. You know the grid um, reference which surrounds uh, this. Uh, fabric element on the inside, I think, is, uh, is really particularly um, an interesting tension. I position this piece on spheres, an exaggerated element of something that could have been also the design of that time, because you can see the sphere element, whether it's a full sphere or a half a sphere, appearing um, in a lot of, of the furniture of the time. Usually they're much smaller. So the exaggeration of that creates this tension of instability. It's almost like this idea of a movable object. And then a little bit you know, further to the front, you see this gesture of this reflective surface, almost like a drop of mercury that um, seems to have ended up on the surface by accident. And I think this is a great addition. Uh, you know, having the, the, the pieces, uh, the Lohmeyer pieces in there. Uh, playing. I'd like to highlight what is happening over here, which I find particularly fascinating, starting from the tool box, the, the cabinet. Um, it's a complete uh, contrast to the finished objects that surround this piece, but it's actually what the whole um, spirit of the Wiener Werkstatt was all about, you know, the craft and the making and this incredible collection of tools, you know, in the roughness, um, surrounded in the roughness of the box, very beautifully displayed, the, the big sphere in front of it, again, as a reference, uh, a glowing sphere to um, highlight uh, that particular object. The sphere is obviously part of this uh, oversized um, mobile uh, chandelier um, that creates that space and that relationship. It's somewhere right behind the cabinet is the um, shoes, this dress shoes, highlighting obviously uh, a code that was quite kind of formal because it was all about performance. I think it's interesting to talk about this um, wall um, cabinet. One of them is a wall clock, and this one is a, a storage uh, unit uh, that is normally meant to position against the wall. And if you see, uh, the surface at the back is never finished, so it's actually left in its raw uh, state, highlighting the material that is, was actually made. Um, it was only natural for me to dress these surfaces in mirror uh, to create that illusion effect um, and, 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 and create that playfulness uh, between uh, the reflections of objects. Uh, in this particular case, it highlights the back of a chair, um, which you wouldn't see uh, in normal circumstances, and also uh, creating this tension between the image, the chair itself, and the light that is beautifully framed um, around the motif uh, on the back. Um, the chair is uh, sitting on stills. It's the extension of their own legs, so bringing the importance of quite a utilitarian uh, piece of furniture. Always 
being about the reflection of light, you know, and having these elements of, uh, of experiencing that.